This is my take on the Olympus 17mm f1.8 lens. It is one of Olympus's range of four highly acclaimed M43 fast prime lenses. The 12mm f2, this 17mm f1.8, the 45mm f1.8 and the 75mm f1.8. This 17mm fills the general purpose moderate wide angle niche held on full frame digital and in the film days by the ubiquitous 35mm lens. It is the nearest thing to a general purpose lens you can have without going zoom. All the camera marks have always had a choice of lenses at this popular 54 degree angle of view, going back to the original 35mm camera, the Leica. Why is it so popular? Well, because it hits the sweet spot for general out and about photography. It's wide enough to get most things in, but not wide enough to distort them. Its perspective looks natural on landscapes and urban scenes of cars and crowds. It's long enough even to do portraits, provided you don't stick your camera up your subject's nose, and are happy to leave in a bit of their environment, but nine times out of ten that's probably what you want to do anyway. It has good depth of field, to give you a bit of leeway on your focusing, for those off-the-cuff shots, but open right up to f2 and use close-up, it will soften your background adequately. It's the street photographer's holy grail really, fast and wieldy, compact and inconspicuous. That's the lens genre, what about this example of it, the Olympus 17mm f1.8. The first impression on picking it up is that it is heavy for such a small lens. Actually 118 grams or 4 ounces, it isn't heavy at all. What it is is metallic and dense, it feels like it's been machined from the solid metal and that gives a nice sense of mass without the actual burden of it. It feels like it would be weather sealed, but it isn't. It is small, if not tiny, and though not truly a pancake lens, it isn't far off, as you can see from the side-by-side -side shots here with its obvious competitor, the uh, Panasonic 20mm f1.7. The Panasonic is lighter and feels much more plasticky by comparison. The focus ring on the 17mm is quite narrow in order to accommodate the backward sliding movement that engages manual focus and reveals a distance scale making sense of the engraved depth of field markings. A depth of field scale. It made me feel quite nostalgic. I've never heard of anyone using the scale mind you, it's there just in case. Like those vacuum wine bottle stoppers that can serve the remains of a bottle of wine you didn't finish. As usual Olympus does not supply a lens hood. It probably doesn't need one, but even so it does let the side down. That and the lack of weather sealing are the only minus points I can find. And my little £5 46mm hood from eBay fits it anyway, luckily. In use, the lens justifies every penny of its price. I've read a few reviews damning with faint praise the optical performance of this lens. I can't refute them technically, but as a photographer I can only disagree and say that I find this lens optically superb. Out and about in the middle of an English winter, I've used this lens at f1.8 and f2 a lot of the time. Not only is it sharp at these apertures, but it is clean and contrasty too. Here is a high mag comparison with the Panasonic 20mm. The images look identical to me. The images the 17mm produces are subjectively very, very pleasing. And although I always personally shoot raw, this lens on an Olympus body would produce JPEG second to none in quality. Distortion is negligible, as you'd hope in a prime like this. And while if you pixel peep you can find purple fringing at the edges on tree branches and the like, it isn't excessive and is easily removed. Focusing speed is as good as it gets, and focusing is silent in video use. This aspect stands it head and shoulders above the Panasonic 20mm. Here it is in action on a dull, dull day. stunning. One thing I should mention is the manual focusing. When you draw the ring back the camera goes into manual mode regardless of the setting. This works seamlessly with my Panasonic bodies too. For some reason manual focusing with this lens is really easy. It snaps in and out of focus and makes manual focusing an unexpected pleasure. It's useful for those fast street shots where you really can't faff around with a focus spot and want to home straight in. You've got enough depth of field with a lens like this to mask a bit of inaccuracy, 
And I'd really urge any younger photographers who have never done it to practice and hone their manual focusing skills. It'll come quite quickly when you understand you don't have to be bang on all the time and it really gives you an edge when you're working off your instincts. I also liked it that the focusing ring has stops at each extreme of focus. It makes you feel the designers of this lens were photographers themselves and understood that while not crucial, it just feels better. Closest focus is about 9 inches, so you won't be doing macros, but it's fine for a general purpose lens. To sum up, let's get the obvious comparison out of the way first. What about the 20mm Panasonic? Well that lens is smaller, lighter, just as sharp and cheaper. On the other hand, it doesn't feel as svelte and focus speed doesn't compare. Plus, I personally prefer the wider angle, more involving 17mm focal length of the Olympus. The price difference is about 20% though, so it's quite substantial. For my part, this 17mm is a lens that, like my 45mm Olympus, will never be out of my bag or sold. I like it that much. I can only relate it to the Canon 35mm f2 I used on my M2 Leica. It oozes quality. It says pick me up and use me, I want to work. Team it up with its equally compact and fast 45mm f1.8 Stablemate and you would have the Batman and Robin of lens combos, a truly dynamic duo. The silky smooth, fast and quiet focusing, pleasing perspective and of a piece feel of this little Olympus, along with its optical quality, make it a pleasure to use. I've had two favourite lenses up to now, my Olympus 45mm and my Panasonic 12-35mm zoom. I now have three favourites. Thanks for watching.